In this video, we'll explain how to terminate a Panduit RJ45 field turn plug. This video is divided into chapters so we can explore each step of the termination process, including how to identify the cable end, prepare the cable, orient the cable to a straight TG wire cap, and terminate a Panduit RJ45 field turn plug on cable end one. To begin, set the CJAS tool to a cutting depth of three. The higher the number on the CJAS tool, the deeper the cut will be. It's better to begin with a lower cutting depth and increase it if necessary to avoid cutting into the cable pairs. Insert 1.5 to 2 inches of the cable into the tool and carefully rotate the tool around the cable two to three times. Gently bend the cable to remove the jacket that has been cut and remove any additional excess material. After you have removed the cut jacket, carefully bend the conductor pairs down and away from the center to ensure there is no divider. If there's a divider, snip it flush with a cable jacket. It is always a good idea to confirm whether you are terminating cable end 1 or cable end 2. You can tell that you are working with cable end 1 because the brown pair is on the bottom left and the blue pair is on the top left as you look into the cable. To properly terminate any field turn plug, the most important thing to consider is the orientation of the plug compared to the wire cap and color coded conductor pairs. To help us understand proper orientation, let's start by identifying the parts of the wire cap and field turn plug that we will be referencing. When terminating the field turn plug, you must use the field turn plug wire cap. It is not interchangeable with a Minicom TG wire cap because the field turn plug wire cap is smaller. The three components we need to identify under wire cap are the strain relief, the keeper, and the castle. The strain relief is located on the end of the wire cap that slides onto the cable jacket. The strain relief depresses onto the cable jacket and holds the wire cap firmly onto the cable to prevent any movement that could negatively impact the connection. The keeper is a small cavity on top of the wire cap. The keeper connects the wire cap to the plug housing. The side of the wire cap opposite the strain relief is known as the castle. Inside the castle are two posts that separate the conductor pairs when terminating cable N2. There are two components to identify on the plug housing, the catch and the retaining latch. The catch is the piece that snaps into the keeper to connect the plug housing and the wire cap. The retaining latch secures the terminated plug into an RJ45 jack module. Orientation of the plug housing refers to whether the retaining latch on the plug housing is facing up or down, and it is this orientation that will determine the correct placement for your conductors inside the wire cap. During termination, you must ensure that the plug housing, the wire cap, and the conductors maintain the same orientation to maintain correct wire mapping. When terminating cable end one with a field term wire cap, pay attention to the blue and orange pairs. Position the cable so that the blue and orange pairs are oriented in the same direction as the strain relief on the wire cap and the catch and retaining latch on the plug housing. For example, if the latch is facing upwards, both the strain relief and the blue and orange pairs will also be positioned upwards. If the latch is facing downward, the strain relief and the blue and orange pairs will also be positioned downward. Be sure to always maintain this orientation and positioning throughout the entire termination process. Now that the cable is prepared and we understand the proper way to orient the cable, we can perform the termination. The steps to terminating the RJ45 field turn plug are almost identical to the shielded TG jack except for two main differences. The first difference is that the field turn plug is male, while the TG jack module is considered to be female. The retaining latch on the field turn plug will snap into the TG jack module to couple them together. The second difference between the two terminations is the size of the wire caps. Each quadrant of the field turn wire cap is shorter than the TG wire cap meaning these two wire caps are not interchangeable. 
Once a cable has been prepared and oriented to the plug housing and wire cap, we can perform the termination. Look into the cable end and observe the twist rate of the two wires in the pair. Cut the wires so that they are aligned horizontally to one another. You will need to cut each conductor pair individually to account for the difference in twist rate between them. Cut each conductor pair to a different length and space them so that they can be easily guided into the four quadrants of the wire cap. From this point, you can continue with the same steps as the shielded TG jack termination. Squeeze the two tabs on the strain relief to ensure that it is fully open. Insert the conductors into the strain relief end of the wire cap according to the TIA-568B wiring scheme with the strain relief on the same side as the blue and orange pairs for end one. Use your fingers to push the wire cap firmly onto the cable. Make sure that the wire cap is fully seated against the end of the cable jacket. Ensure that each conductor pair is placed into the correct quadrant. Bend the conductor pairs to their respective sides to hold the wire cap securely into place. Locate the tab on the green EGJT1 tool. With the tool open and the tab facing up, place the wire cap into the matching size slot with the strain relief facing up. Close the tool and ensure that the tab comes down directly on top of the strain relief. Use your thumb to apply pressure on the tool above the strain relief and fully depress the strain relief firmly onto the cable jacket. Unbend the conductor pair so they are returned to their original position in line with the cable. Ensure that the strain relief is seated firmly against the cable jacket and there is no movement or slack present. Any slack could allow the strain relief to press against the conductors instead of the jacket, resulting in a faulty connection. Next, untwist the conductor pairs to seat them into their respective grooves in the castle. If the blue pair is positioned on the left side of the wire cap, seat all white conductor pairs on the left, with their colored counterparts on the right. If the blue pair is positioned on the right side of the wire cap, seat all white conductors on the right with their colored counterparts on the left. Untwist the pairs only as much as necessary to seat them into the cap. Any untwisting that occurs inside the wire cap can lead to crosstalk. If the wires become untwisted inside the wire cap, retwist them tighter than before. When you untwist them again, you should be able to seat each colored wire into the correct groove while maintaining the proper twist inside the cap. Double check that all conductors are fully seated in the correct location and position. Bend the conductors perpendicular to the cable and wire cap and snip them flush with the outside wall of the wire cap. Place the plug housing on the wire cap with the retaining latch oriented to the strain relief and blue and orange conductor pairs. Hold the tool so that it is open with the tab facing down. Guide the cable between the two rounded ends of the tool and place the plug housing into the slot. Hold the plug housing firmly into the tool with one hand. With your other hand, lift the free end to push the wire cap into the plug housing until you hear an audible click. The cable end one termination is now complete and you can move on to cable end two. When terminating cable N2, the objective is to maintain correct wire mapping between ends 1 and 2. The steps to terminating cable N2 are similar to cable end 1. The main difference between the two is the orientation of the conductor pairs. To terminate cable N2, begin by preparing the cable using the same process you used to terminate cable end 1. Remember, on cable N2, the brown pair is on the top left and the blue pair is on the bottom left. When terminating cable N2, position the cable so that the brown and the green pairs are oriented in the same direction as the strain relief, the catch, the retaining latch, and insert them into the wire cap. Be sure to always maintain this orientation and positioning throughout the entire termination process. Continue to follow the same steps as cable N1 until the strain relief has been depressed. Before we untwist and seat the conductor pairs into the grooves of the wire cap, we need to reposition the conductor pairs on cable N2 so they map properly to cable N1. When routing the conductor pairs, cross the orange and green pairs around the post, with the green pair positioned to the outside of the post. 
cross the brown and blue conductor pairs around the post with the blue pair position to the outside of the post. The blue and green conductor pairs are routed to the outside of the post because it provides the most separation between the pairs, reducing crosstalk. The highest probability for crosstalk is between the blue and the green pairs. Then, fully seat the crossed pairs into their respective grooves and complete the termination. Once the conductor pairs have been reversed, the rest of the termination steps are the same as cable end 1.